of our installment, getting to know the personalities of the Monmouth University Campus and Athletics Department in true style, as I'm happy to welcome on to Hawk Talk here this evening, Hawk number one, President Pat Leahy. How are you doing this evening? I'm great, Eddie. Uh, I don't know if I appreciate being Hawk number one, but uh, I'm one of many Hawks here, so glad to be with you tonight. Well, we appreciate you giving us a couple of minutes, and it's fitting that we get to speak now after what was, without question, one of the most interesting, challenging, but I'm sure on a level as well, rewarding semesters that you've ever had to deal with. And, and before we get into too much conversation, just your thoughts on, on how and what brought us to this point now here this evening, having to do this remotely. Well, I'm thrilled to be with you, uh, however remotely. Um, I do look forward to the time we can be back together again in the booth. Uh, overlooking uh, one of our football games at Kessler Stadium. Uh, but it has been an amazing spring, Eddie. Uh, nobody saw this coming. I always say uh, this is one of those things that they did not ask me about in the interview a year or so ago. But, um, you know, I think we've persevered. Today, as you probably know, would have been commencement day here on campus. So I want to congratulate any of our graduates who are might be watching tonight. It was an incredible semester. I think through perseverance and fortitude, we got to the finish line. I look back on it, as you say, and do so with a, a lot of pride in the Monmouth community and the way that we responded. That'll be one of the themes in our conversation here with President Patrick Leahy here on Hawk Talk. We'll discuss perseverance. We'll also discuss the success stories uh, that have come out of Monmouth University during this time. If you would like to ask a question, how about this access, by the way? If you want to ask a question of Monmouth University's president, just submit it in our Facebook Live chat. That question gets relayed to me, and then it goes right to the president. And before we do anything further, President Leahy, I have to ask how you, how your family are doing during this time. Well, thank you for asking, Eddie. We're doing really well. I mean, there are seven of us who are uh, quarantined here at the Doherty House. Uh, I think you know I have four children, my beautiful wife, Amy, and my four kids. And we have a dear family friend uh, who's an international student from that other university in Pennsylvania that we used to, to talk about that we don't mention here on this campus. Uh, but the seven of us have been here for the last eight, eight or nine weeks. And to be honest, it's been going great. I've enjoyed it immensely. It is, in fact, one of the real silver linings of this whole pandemic is the ability to be together uh, uh, with all of my family. When I sent my two older daughters away to college, uh, they're so busy with summer internships and everything else that I never honestly thought that we would ever live together again and uh we've had this time you know since what may 8th or whatever it was, or uh, march 8th we've had all this time together it's been really special i asked our football coach kevin callahan this question i'm curious to get your thoughts on it as well in your professional career is this the longest amount of time that you've been able to be home with the family, not traveling or going to an office? I think I got the question about uh, time with the family. I, I, I've never spent so much time <laughs> with the family. <laughs> um, you know, the, the last uh, eight years I've served as a university president, and you know how full those days can be. And uh, I've never spent this much time together. And uh, I think what we're discovering is that we really do love each other. We really do enjoy each other's company. Uh, we really do have fun together. So uh, it's been a real satisfying part of an otherwise uh, really, really dreadful situation. I, I don't want to make too much light of how much fun we're having because I'm incredibly sensitive to the people who are uh, dealing with this terrible public health crisis, not only those who are uh, affected directly by the pandemic, but the healthcare workers that are working on the front line to care for them. And uh, so I send my very best to all of them while we're here having some fun together. 
Well, and you can't drive by campus without seeing that signage that is placed out there saluting the frontline workers. Between that and some of the Monmouth alums that are on the front lines, the university's really doing its part right now. Well, we're trying. I, I came up with this idea a few weeks ago to just get a big banner that simply says Monmouth University salutes our healthcare workers and first responders. And I just said to, to uh, Vice President Patty Swana, get the largest one you can pretty much find. Let's hang it right there on Cedar Avenue and let's just uh, publicly proclaim how proud we are and how grateful we are. And she tells me that from the moment they started installing it, Eddie, to now, as people drive by, they honk their horns and they roll down the windows and they, they, they cheer. Um, it's a small way, I think, that uh, Monmouth demonstrates its appreciation. Speaking with Monmouth President Patrick Leahy, the questions are starting to come in for President Leahy. If you have a question, again, please submit it into our Facebook live chat, and that question will get relayed over to me. We've got a few other topics to discuss, but the questions are coming in, so we have to give the people what they want. And we have two questions that are kind of the same one. Two people checking in here this evening, Catherine Mary and Janine, have similar questions, and they're getting right into it. So, President Leahy, here you go. What are your thoughts and hopes that the students are back in September and also with that student athletes in competition as well? I mean, my hope, of course, is that we are back on campus late summer and early fall as close to normal as possible. Um, it's not going to be perfectly normal. I think we all agree to that, but we want it to be as close to normal as possible so that we can restore the energy and the vitality and the excitement uh, to this campus that is so typical of the Monmouth University campus. Um, it's certainly, we're working toward that. We have a lot of different scenarios that we're developing right now to make that possible. But to be honest, I can't give you a perfect clarity right now. It will be dependent on the public health officials here in the state of New Jersey and what they allow us to do. Um, I am very, very hopeful with some of the very uh, deliberate loosening that the governor is doing. I hope that we can do that well so that that can continue. And by the time we're at August 1st, we're bringing athletes back for their fall seasons and then getting ready for the students to return uh, right after Labor Day. Um, so the best I can tell you right now is I'm hopeful and we're planning for it, but I just can't give you that clarity until uh, the governor and the secretary of higher ed in the state uh, weigh in on it. I think that's the interesting thing that everyone has to deal with, whether it's a university, a company, a professional sports team. While we are also involved in what we do, this is a much bigger issue, and there's state and, and national entities at play here that there's a lot of different kind of layers to this that will have to happen. It's not just when can we start playing sports again. Oh, I mean, we from day one, way back in March, we've been following the Monmouth County public health advice, the state of New Jersey public health health advice, the federal government's public health advice, and then even, Eddie, the World Health Organization's uh, guidelines. So we have all those layers, as you suggest, that we need to be sensitive to. Um, most of the time, we find that they sync up pretty well so that there's pretty clear direction, but not always. Um, the, main, the main thing for us is to follow very closely what the state uh, believes is appropriate. I was very pleased last week to be named to the New Jersey Campus Reopening Committee. It might have a more elegant term than that, but that's what I'm calling it. And uh, uh, it's going to be comprised of about 25 individuals from public education, private education, private higher education, public health officials, government officials, all together trying to figure out how can we develop a pathway toward responsible reopening. The questions are starting to roll in for President Patrick Leahy. There's a bunch in the queue that I have to get to. So we go to the questions. And Good job to the first here tonight, Eddie. I, I do. I, there's a bunch of people at work right now, and by far, my job is the easiest. <laughs> the 
first question comes in. It comes in from a coworker of ours, the associate head soccer coach at Monmouth, Hugh McDonald. And Hugh wants to know, we're getting right into sports, President Leahy. What are your favorite professional sports teams and who are some of your biggest sports influences? Wow. Okay. So from something very serious to uh, something not so serious. Uh, I say this with a little bit of um, trepidation, but um, my favorite professional uh, sports team are the New England Patriots. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry to have to admit that. Uh, I, w I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland, and I was a huge Colts fan as a kid. I mean, I knew personally, Eddie, Johnny Unitas. I mean, the Unitas family and my family were very close. So I knew Johnny Unitas. We knew Brooks Robinson, you know, the great third baseman for the Orioles. I was a huge Baltimore fan. And then when I was, I, I don't know, 13 or 14, uh, the Colts left town and went to Indianapolis, as you now well know. And I was left without a team. Went to college, no team. My first uh, place living after college was in New England, where I spent uh, five years or so. I needed a team, so I adopted the Patriots. And they weren't really that good at the time. So I have uh, stayed on that bandwagon over the years. So they're my favorite, although... It's going to be very interesting to see how if my commitment to the Patriots wanes at all, given uh, Tom Brady's departure. Because to me, the fascinating combination was the Belichick-Brady uh, combination. So I'll be following the Buccaneers as well. And then I remain in, on the baseball side. I remain a diehard Oriole fan. Uh, and it's a good thing I'm a Patriots fan because I have had not, not had much – for which to cheer <laughs> uh, in recent years with the Orioles. But they're my, they're my two sports teams, professional sports teams. And within that, you also mentioned maybe some of the influences. You said it, Johnny Unitas, Brooks Robinson. I had no idea, by the way, in all of our conversations that you knew such amazing all-time sports heroes. Are they also some of your influences? Yeah, well, uh, I remember as a kid, John Unitas, uh, it was my friend Kenneth, he and I would go out into his yard and his father would throw us passes in the yard. And I didn't realize until I got, you know, considerably older that that was Johnny Unitas. I still believe to be the sec second best quarterback of all time, you know, behind that other guy I just mentioned uh, a, a little bit ago. So he, he was, and, and uh, Brooks Robinson, they just seemed like classy people as well as uh, great, great athletes. So they were, they were really good, uh, significant influences uh, uh, on, on my life, especially when I was younger and playing every conceivable sport. That's an unbelievable story. We're going to have to, when we have time to sit down and talk more, I need to know more <laughs> about your friend Kenneth's dad, who just happens to be a Hall of Famer. That is, that is unbelievable. Uh, questions continue to roll in for President Leahy. Uh, first of all, before the question, is Camden Yards your favorite athletic facility outside of Kessler Stadium and the Ocean First Bank Center? I was going to say, besides those that you just mentioned, uh, yeah, Cam Camden Yards. I mean, every every uh, stadium since then has basically copied Camden Yards, in my opinion. Uh, if you haven't been to Camden Yards, whether you like the Orioles or not, you got to you got to make a trip to Camden Yards. Although, having spent time in New England you'll not be surprised to know that I have incredible memories of uh, trips to Fenway Park as well. I mean, what, what, a, what a special trip that is. Uh, so there would be, they would be my two favorite ballparks. Questions continue to come in for President Leahy, and they stick with, uh, we're going to stay in the world of sports, but we're going to have a historical side to it as well. And our coworker, Ken Taylor, is checking in, the head of the Blue White Club in the athletics department. And Ken wants to know if you could play a round of golf with three historical figures, past or present, who would you pick to be in that dream foursome? You and what three historical figures? Jack Nicholas, the greatest golfer of all time. Um, uh, Bobby Jones, who uh, probably laid claim to that uh, mantle before Jack Nicholas. And I guess Tiger Woods to see 
how, uh, you know, he would compete against those two. Um, probably the, th the three of them. I I'm a big Jack Nicholas fan. Uh, and until Tiger Woods gets to 18 majors, he will not be, in my opinion, the greatest golfer of all time. That is the only way you measure excellence in golf. And he f he's three behind him, I think, at this point. Now, you might catch him, but Jack Nicholas is, uh, is, a, is a folk hero in my family. I should have said something really charming. Anyone who thought they were going to tune in. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I was going to no, say. No, now, please. I, I'm curious now because. I should have said what something. What was the charming answer? <laughs> I should have said something really charming like uh, my three brothers. My favorite foursome would have been my three older brothers and me. Or my dad and a couple of my brothers and me. Uh, they, they, that would be my uh, favorite foursome that I can put together. But uh, I think the question Ken asked was historical figure. So I'll, I'll go with the answer I just gave you. Well, we stick with the golf theme. And the head women's golf coach at Monmouth, Michelle Malia, is checking in. Uh, she's, as we all are, upset that the golf outing was moved. But she wants to know, President Leahy, have you been working on your golf game during this time? No, I haven't, uh, Michelle, but the best thing for my golf game is a six-month layoff. So when I do come back uh, at some point here in the coming weeks, uh, look out, because I am often at my best at the earliest part of the season, and then the bad habits develop, and I come back down to earth. Uh, so um, I, it's, not un, it's not atypical for me to go six months, shoot, my lowest round of the year and then you know as i said come back to normal so well the golf questions now have come in but but we get to veer into the rest of athletics and our co-worker john roos checks in uh, the senior associate athletics director over in athletics and, and john's got a good question president Leahy. you came from a very successful division three athletics program at wilkes before monmouth and john's question how important is it to you to have a strong athletics department and program at a university and what that can do for the rest of the university family? I, I love, I love it. And it's part of why working at a university like ours is so much fun. Um, three things I, I love about athletics. Number one, I love what uh, athletics means to the student athlete in terms of their education. I always say that the coaches are a special brand of educator uh, because in addition to what those student athletes are learning in the classroom and through their first first rate professors, they have that special influence that they get from their coaches. Uh, and it's really special. So I love what it means for our student athletes, number one. Number two, I love the energy and enthusiasm and excitement that it can create for a campus community and for an extended university community. I love that. And you get more of that here, of course, a little bit more of it here than you do in a division three environment. And then the third thing is, especially in a division one environment, you have an opportunity as in athletics to shine a spotlight on your academic institution. I mean, that's one of the reasons I believe so strongly in investing in athletics is not just for the two things I just mentioned, but, but also because there's a chance that, you know, our teams could go out and play other first class nationally known institutions. And in doing so, it shines a spotlight on the academic enterprise. So that's one of the reasons why I say to faculty members, you know, within reason, we ought to be investing in athletics because what we're trying to do is get exposure for the great work that the faculty members do day in and day out. So uh, for those three reasons, uh, I'm a huge supporter of athletics. And it was really no more evident than this year, your first year. I jokingly called it to you, the President Leahy effect, but every game you went to seemed to be a Monmouth win. All I can tell you, before Pat Leahy, no Big South championship. After Pat Leahy, Big South championship. I mean... You you decide whether there was any 
<laughs> you know I'm joking. I, I, I've been saying, for example, to the football team, after they beat Kennesaw State, and they went down, and I think Kennesaw State was like number four in the country or something, weren't they, at the time? And we went down and beat them and beat them badly. But, you know, most of us didn't make the trip. So I called Coach Callahan, and I said, I, I don't want to intrude, but I'd like to stop by one of the practices the, the week following and just congratulate the team. This was an historic win, and I just want to make sure you know that the campus community was behind you. So I had them all gathered together at eight o'clock one morning out there on the, on the stadium field. And I said, what I really want to do for all, to all, say to all of you students is thank you. Thank you for waiting until I got here to pull off an historic win like that. <laughs> so I think they got the idea. I didn't have anything to do with it, of course. I just feel so fortunate that when I arrived to, not only did football do so well, but field hockey did so well and women's soccer did so well. And, you know, our winter sports were doing so well. I mean, we had a great athletic season uh, going uh, prior to this pandemic. And that is the theme of our next question that comes in from a fellow alum, classmate of mine, Mark Hutchison, who goes to every basketball game he can. And Mark wants to know President Leahy. How much does it mean to you and to the university to have a program like the University of North Carolina visit the Ocean First Bank Center in December? I'm just hoping that goes off without a hitch. I mean, uh, what a thrill, Mark, that'll be for all of us uh, to have one of the great storied programs in American athletics come to West Long Branch into our, our home and into our house and to compete. Uh, it's a great testament to Coach Rice. I mean, you know, I think it was a dedication to him as a member of Tar, he Tar Heel Nation that they they probably uh, agreed to do this. And uh, uh, I can't wait for that, uh, the energy and the enthusiasm that that will bring, not only for our campus, but for the entire community, is uh, it's going to be very, very special. And the Tar Heels will join a list of teams, you alluded to it earlier, who have come on campus within the last year, Stanford uh, on the field hockey side, Cal Berkeley. Uh, there has been a lot of big-time visitors that we've seen coming our way. I think you have a visitor, by the way. I do. I'm just going to text someone to say, can someone get let the dog out? <laughs> Go ahead. I'm, I, I'm, I'm listening, Eddie. Absolutely, absolutely. That's the beauty of live broadcast and live production, which you could study at Mammoth, by the way, if you want to come and join our Mammoth Digital Network team. But mentioning Carolina coming in, Stanford and Cal Berkeley came in last year on the field hockey side. You mentioned how it's a great campus to be at. Not only does Mammoth go travel and play some of the best teams in the country, you and I spoke at Kansas last year, but they come to West Long Branch and we really get to show off the campus when they do. Yeah, I mean, um, do you know how proud I was that we were able to uh, host Stanford and Cal Berkeley here on our campus? I mean, that was that was fantastic. And, you know, it was a thrilling come from behind semifinal win against Berkeley. And then we lost a heartbreaker to Stanford. But I, I love showing off what we've got here because, uh, you know, people at Berkeley and Stanford, they don't they don't understand what we have here. They don't know what Monmouth is all about. And think every little time we can bring somebody in and expose who we are to them uh it, it establishes us uh more super regionally and in that case even even nationally i love for example when when uh uh the women's field hockey you know the field hockey team beat penn i sent out on my twitter account you know mammoth beats penn mammoth beats penn i said i just like saying that you know but having them here and getting us introduced uh, to, to, uh, to the folks at Penn. I, it's very, very important. That's one of the reasons why athletics is uh, an important component to a first-class private university like ours. Well, you just transitioned for me, and there is no, I think, university president more engaged, more active, on Twitter than you are. I know we've got it on our bottom, your your handle at Patrick F. Leahy, but 
that really has been a great way for you to keep in touch and for you to inform the Monmouth community. I just use it to do that, to inform the Monmouth community. Uh, I'm not looking to pick fights or, or weigh in on things that uh, I don't have standing. I, I use it as a way to just promote what we're doing at, at Monmouth and uh, how proud I am of different faculty members who have books and papers published and students that are achieving great outcomes and our athletic teams that are competing against other really fine schools and, and winning. Uh, I just use it that way and it's proven to be a, a lot of fun. I could use some more followers though. So if anyone out there is listening. Well, I've noticed it's trending. It's trending upwards. The follower numbers are, are getting to a good place. <laughs> You know, when I first started, just a quick story, Eddie, I first started at that other university and uh, I went to the student government and I asked them for some help in getting me started. You know, I needed some followers. I just joined Twitter and they said, Dr. Leahy, we're going to take care of everything. So that Friday night, I'm sitting there and they're coming in like ding, ding, ding. I mean, I, I picked up 350 followers like in one hour. And I thought, whatever the student government is doing, it's working. The next day, I lost about 200 of those 350 followers. They deregistered. So I go to the student government president. I say, what's up with that? He said, oh, well, we were giving out free T-shirts, and we told them that they had to sign up for your Twitter, Twitter account in order to get the T-shirt. I guess once they got it, they decided otherwise. <laughs> so so uh, it's a lot harder to build a following than uh, I initially thought. We could try that and then just do it where they get the shirt at the end of the year. So yeah. maybe they're inclined to be a follower for longer. Yeah, or just figure out a way to keep them from, from uh, dumping me. That's all. I think that's a good point. It's a great follow. And if you don't, again, it's at Patrick F. Leahy on Twitter. Questions continue to come in, but uh, one of the, the things I wanted to, to touch on, President Leahy, is you mentioned how your Twitter accounts you used to promote the other great things happening at Monmouth. How about the year? We could step out of athletics for a second. The debate team with its best ever national ranking and the recent news billboard recognizing Monmouth as a music business leading institution. That I got from your Twitter account really has been a tremendous year for all teams, be them on the field or off the field. And what I love about that is when I was told by Joe Rapola, the chair of, of uh, that department, that we had made it onto the billboard list of the top 25 music industry programs in the country, I thought, well, that sounds pretty interesting. That's great. Congratulations, Joe. Where do I find out more about it? And I went to the link. But then I start looking, Eddie, at the other schools that are listed on there, USC, UCLA, NYU you know, Syracuse, I mean, some top, top shelf schools. That's the company that we want to increasingly keep. And that's why I, I tout that so much. You talk about, you know, Model UN and the debate team. What I love about it is the debate team goes to competitions against NYU, the University of Rochester, you know, really first class schools. And we come away the winning institution at those competitions as well. So it's a little bit analogous to athletics. I love the fact when Monmouth and its students can go up against other really first-class institutions, some that you might argue are better well-known, slightly better reputations, and then when we go head-to-head, -head, we beat them. That, every time we do that, it burnishes our reputation just a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. And uh, we're going to continue to do that kind of stuff in the years to come so that we can expose to the world what happens on this campus day in and day out. You know, if someone's maybe watching or hearing you for the first time here this evening, I think that the biggest theme that they could take away from this, not only is the success that happens at Vomit on and off the field, but you could tell in your description of things, you're a pretty competitive person in, in your own right, and that's coming off in your answers pretty clearly. I mean, I, I am competitive, have been. I'm the youngest of six kids. I mean, it's part. It's in my DNA. I mean, I, I had to fight for everything. Although my older brothers will tell me I was the, the baby, so I was the spoiled one. But 
Um, I think, you know, I have great respect for all colleges and universities across the country. I mean, they're all in their own way doing really important work, you know, whether it's recognized or not. I just feel like we have to keep finding ways to compete with other institutions. And, uh, and, and when we compete well against them, as I said, it's going to burnish our reputation. And uh, we, we feel like we need to get more credit for the great work that happens here. That's one of the things. I'll just give you a quick example. Someone told me yet again a, a couple of weeks ago, oh, Monmouth University is that hidden gem. And I'm thrilled that they think that we are a gem. But I don't want to be a hidden gem anymore. You know what I mean? It's about time that we, you know, unhide it, if that's the right word, and, uh, and get the credit that uh, the faculty and the staff here that are doing remarkable work on this campus deserve. And I think one of the keys also is not just the successes, celebrating the successes as well, but as we've seen, be an incredibly accessible university. You're doing a podcast with my colleague, Matt Harmon, every single week, and you're having on people at the university that are in the midst of what's happening now. Marian Nagy, your most recent guest, the, the head of the crisis management team. And, and how many schools have a president that's willing to get on and talk for that length of time? How important is it for you to, through that vehicle, get that message out? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm glad that you mentioned uh, my colleague, Matt Harmon. Um, you know, I, I feel like for nine weeks, I've been training him up, Eddie. It's nice to be with you, a real professional, bona fide professional. <laughs> and I hope he sees that. Uh, you know, I'm kidding. Uh, Matt, it, it was Matt's idea to do this uh, podcast. He just came to me in the midst of this pandemic and said, I just feel like I want to try to do something for the university. Have you ever done a podcast? And I said, I hadn't, but, uh, you got to be careful when you invite a university president to speak because it could go on for a while. Um, and now it's nine weeks later and we're still going strongly. He just thought it was a good idea to allow us that 30 minute chunk of time to, to really get into things and, and unpack things. And uh, I think it's gone over pretty well. And I have invited other key leaders around campus onto that, uh, onto that broadcast. The chair of our board, Mike Plodwick, who is a, a, an alum of the university, has been on it, talking about the board's support of the university during this pandemic. And our chief academic officer, our athletic director was on uh, most recently, uh, our vice president for student life, who's also the chair of our crisis management team, joined us. So we wanted to make sure that we get some other voices involved to uh, explain how we're navigating this uh, unprecedented situation. And if you've missed any of those podcasts, you can go to monmouth.edu. You could search for it. Very easy to find. Also, again, follow the president on Twitter. It, both he and Matt put those out every single week. And, and it's great to take all of us kind of behind the scenes of as we kind of shift the conversation for just a second to what's been going on. And I think the biggest theme that's come out of what we're all dealing with now is really how resilient Monmouth University is, students, faculty, staff. Uh, really, and kudos, President Lay, to you and the team for being able to, in a pretty short amount of time, be able to put things forward and have the students enjoy a spring semester and, as you said, a graduation, uh, really under uncertain terms. I look back on this spring, and I'll say this again. I've said it publicly before. I'll say it again, so I may as well share with you. I can't imagine that there's a university in the country that's been at let's put it this way, that's been more student focused than we have been this spring. I mean, I'm sure there are others that have been equally, but I can't imagine there are, there are institutions that have been more student focused. I mean, we were early at clearing the campus with our students' uh, safety in mind. We were early when we decided we had to go remote for the whole semester, early at announcing we would refund unused room, meal, and parking fees. In fact, consequently, we were one of the first to actually process those refunds. We were early on establishing a flexible grading policy because we knew this would be a stressful semester for our students. We were one of the first to create 
one of my pet projects, which was the President's Relief Fund, which just donors over the years had given the president discretionary money. And when I looked at that, the, the, that fund, I just decided I can't imagine that any donor who contributed money to this fund would not agree that given this situation, we need to get this money distributed out to help people pay for food and, and lodging and, you know, just take care of the bare essentials in life. And so we were one of the first to, to, to create this apparatus and to get now, I think I, I posted on Twitter most recently, I think we're up to 800 or 900 students who have benefited from it. So, you know, it's an unprecedented situation. I wouldn't wish it on anybody, but in a funny kind of way, I look back on the last 10 weeks and I think Mammoth was at its best over that time. And I think when everyone is is living through what we're going through now, that's what you look for. And you look for those successes and those success stories. And uh, I was one of the fortunate folks who was t having conversations with students, calling students, seeing how they're doing. The overwhelming majority said how supportive and helpful the university was in remote learning, how great the professors were in helping them get, uh, you know, acclimated to this way of learning. It really was a, an eye-opening experience to be able to talk to the students. And I'm sure you got to hear from some of them as well. Well, I, I, I heard from a lot of them because I have this commitment that if you email me, you will get a response from me. Um, faculty, staff, students, parents, you know, whatever. But, you know, I, I got I chuckled today, Eddie, because I happened to see in my email inbox, it was almost an advertisement from a university which shall remain nameless that touted the fact that they got all their faculty and staff to mobilize and to reach out with every single student enrolled at that university and how amazing that was. And it is amazing. And they said, we reached out in a short period of time to all 1,200 of our students. And I just wrote to the people who led that case management program that you referenced. And I just said, 1,200? We mobilized our community and reached all 6,000 students that are enrolled right now at Monmouth University. Um, again, I'm not trying to one-up. I guess that's that competitiveness in me. Um, I think they did the right thing in doing what they did. I'm very proud of the work that, that we did, um, reaching out to every single student just to try to lend a hand, to troubleshoot for them. Like, are you having problems? How can we be helpful? knocking down barriers for you, uh, just lending uh, emotional uh, support. And uh, I found, uh, as you pointed out, that the people on the, on the staff and the faculty side who were involved in it found it more, more meaningful to them maybe than it was to the students even. So that's a measure of who we are here. If you will have a question for President Leahy, again, please contribute it into our Facebook live chat. It's my pleasure to relay that question to the president who has talked about it all, the university, talked about athletics, and that's where we'll kind of veer back into President Leahy. And you were omnipresent, really, at everything this past year, be it an athletic event, be it an event for a club or organization on campus. But now I'm going to have you reflect for a minute. And it's hard to do this, but in your first year at Monmouth, what are maybe those key moments and memories that stand out to you, especially as you look back after year one at the helm of Monmouth University? Well, I appreciate you saying what you did. I, I always get embarrassed when, when you know, people say, oh, you seem to be everywhere, because every time I feel like I commit to one place, I have to be prepared to tell two other people or clubs or teams or whatever that I can't, can't get to their stuff. So I try to be around. That's one of the great benefits here is that they, they give me uh, a house in which to live that's right here on campus. So it's very accessible, but I, you know, I have so many great memories of my, of my uh, first year. Uh, one of them was, I remember when I think I was in the broadcast booth with you at the last football game, and I think you or maybe Matt or somebody asked me if I knew anything about that, that chain, you know, the chain the football team had. 
And I said, yeah, I want to know what, what's a guy got to do to get his hands on that chain? Well, you have to make a big play or something. And, oh, okay. So at the end of the game, we had locked up the Big South Championship, and I went onto the field to congratulate the players. And Kenji Bahar, the great legend, legendary uh, quarterback and, and uh, student here, who was also from Baltimore, Maryland, played at my rival high school, incidentally. He gave me the, uh, you know, the, the chain. And I got this great picture with the, with the chain hanging around my neck and, and uh, Kenji Bahar in, in one arm. And, and so that, that's one of the great, the great memories that I have uh, from, my, from my first year. If you want to see that photo, by the way, I'm pretty sure it's on the football program's Instagram page. So make sure you get over to that. And that could push for the new Twitter profile picture, maybe. Maybe you and the chain. Maybe one of those backgrounds for my Zoom, Zoom calls. Yeah. I think you figured it out. I think that would be an ideal spot for it. Uh, we do have questions coming in for President Leahy. Again, if you have a question uh, for the president of Monmouth University, submit it into our Facebook live chat. We now have a question coming in from a longtime supporter and parent of an alum. And Kathleen, who is a uh, – she's always watching the broadcast coming to games. Kathleen wants to know, uh, given the spring season being canceled and the winter athletic season being cut short, has there been any conversation with the MAC uh, as far as the Commissioner's Cup trophy? Has that been something that has been discussed at any level, that's something that you can normally engrave Monmouth University right into that. So has that been brought up at all? I was going to say, I mean, uh, you know, it's interesting, uh, Kathleen. I, I'm i embarrassed to say I don't know where where that stands right now, but I uh, intend to ask about it the, the next time I'm on with the uh, other MAC presidents. I, I'm not, I don't know where, where that stands. My guess is we were hopefully leading going into the spring, uh, but uh, I know we have strong spring spring sports as well. So I'm not exactly sure where that is. I just know uh, when I was looking at Monmouth and I uh, was trying to understand a little bit better the athletics program, that jumped out at me is how consistently we win that Commissioner's Cup. And uh, it should be a source of great pride to the university. Yeah, going back to the days of the Northeast Conference and now in the MAC, Monmouth has always – been in that mix at the end because they tend to do well across a variety of sports. I know that's key to you. you. You mentioned to us all the time how important it is for the university to succeed in every facet. So boil that down to athletics, not just a successful football team, but a successful field hockey and track and golf program. I know it's very important to you. Top, top, yeah, top to bottom. We want to be first rate or else rethink whether you should be doing whatever it is, right? Athletically, academically, extracurricularly, we should be first rate from top to bottom all the way through. And if we can't be first rate, if we can't deliver high quality programming, whatever it is, to our students and their families, then we ought to rethink why we're in that sport or why we're offering that academic program or why we're, you know, offering whatever other opportunity. So I, I yeah, I feel that's. That's how you become a first-rate institution. And as we've detailed here on our conversation with President Leahy, those successes at Monmouth go beyond the athletics field that we've detailed. We do have another question coming in. We're going to stay in the athletics realm. And Lynn from Jackson, who contributes regularly here on our Hawk Talk conversation, wants to know how important it is to have an athletic director like Dr. McNeil, who has been at Monmouth for so long, especially – uh, have, being that it is your first year at Monmouth, to have an AD who's got so much experience, how helpful was that for you? Very helpful. You know, I, 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 I haven't had experience in a Division One environment as an academic administrator. I, I uh, attended schools that were Division One. I. I did not, I did not play Division One uh, sports. Um, but uh, it's my first for, foray into working in a Division One environment. First at Scranton, which was proudly Division Three, and then Wilkes, proudly Division Three. So to have someone with her experience was re very comforting to me. Um, and she's legendary, uh, not only around here, but around uh, intercollegiate athletics. And uh, she's obviously done a great job. 
Another question coming in, this one, Steve from West Long Branch. And Steve wants to know, what was your favorite sport to play growing up? Uh, baseball was my my favorite sport growing up. I, I like like a lot of people, I did everything. You know, like if, if there was a ball, I had it in my hand, you know. Uh, but baseball was my sport. Uh, I also played football, uh, baseball and football in, in high school. Um, but I was tall and <laughs> tall and skinny and not very strong and not very fast. So I had to veer to that sport where uh, you could make up for some of those deficiencies. And fortunately, I could do that in baseball. And so that, that was my favorite, favorite sport to play. Um, you know, I look back and think I probably should have played in, in uh, college because I, I regret that I didn't. Uh, I did some other things in college, but, but baseball was my favorite. I mean, I was a kid who would play double headers and then I'd come home, eat, and then go back outside and throw the ball against the wall for until the, you know, sun went down or whatever. I just loved it. So safe to say then, were you a pitcher with that tall frame of yours? No, strangely enough, Eddie, I was a catcher. I was a new breed of catcher, tall and, and lean, but uh, I loved it because if you know the game at all, you know you're in every, you're in every pitch if you're the catcher. Um, but one of the problems I always say was that I had a, a, year, a guy a year older than, than I was and a guy a year younger than I was uh, when I was playing in high school, who could only catch. So they had to move me around the field because I, I could play, you know, marginally anywhere. So I played center, I played third, I played first, um, and pitched a little bit, but I, I always got blasted when I pitched. So they, they did, that didn't last very long. Well, I think they had to keep your bat in the lineup. That's the key. They needed keep... my bat in the lineup, Eddie. I mean, they needed my bat in the lineup. And they don't have a DH, so they had to put me somewhere in the field. <laughs> we have another question coming in for President Leahy, and this one is a little bit of both. It, it has an athletics tint to it, but President Leahy, uh, one of my coworkers, our coworkers in athletics, Jared Weiss, checking in, and he has a, a really good question. How impressed have you been with the work being done currently by Mammoth alum and current student athletes who in a variety of capacities are on the front line of the current pandemic we're facing. Jared, thank you for bringing that up. I'm, I'm reading all of the dispatches that uh, I know our athletics team is putting together with, with those individuals. And um, it's so important. I, I said this at a call earlier today that I think we're all hopeful that Maybe, at least for now, the worst of this pandemic is maybe the curve is flattening or, or coming down or whatever the particular language is. We're hopeful that things are going to start loosening a little bit and we'll be able to get back to, to some semblance of normalcy. But we can't forget, we must remember that there are people who are fighting for their lives because they have the disease and that there are people like our alums and even our current students who are working the front lines at great risk to themselves and for those that are married and have families at great risk to their families potentially to serve our community that way. And uh, at any given time, I wanna remember them. I wanna make sure that we, you know, we're praying for them if that's your thing. Uh, at the very least, thinking about them and uh, honoring the work that they're doing. Because uh, I always say the moment I want to start complaining about something, something didn't go our way this spring or something at mom, at the way, I just stop myself and try to remember I have everything for which to be grateful. And there are people out there that are doing heroic work. And uh, I just need to, you know, offer it up to them. Uh, so thank you for, for mentioning that. Uh, I'm so proud of our Mammoth students and alums who are working the way they are during this crisis. And you can check out what President Leahy was talking about. Those Hawk Heroes stories are available on mammothhawks.com. You can check out 
really what is inspirational stories from a variety of alums from Monmouth who have gone on to work in the medical field and do great things on the front line of the current pandemic that we're facing. Uh, President Leahy, I know that that's been really a constant theme of all of your conversations with all of the employees. You meet regularly with your staff, faculty on Zoom calls. You're very accessible. There's videos on social media. Even today, you sent a text and graduates received a text from you. That personal touch that we have seen throughout that last year, I know is really helping people at this time. I, I hope. I'm just I'm just doing the best I can. There, there's, there's no playbook for this, Eddie. Uh, so you just try to fall back on, you know, your institutional values and your personal values. And um, I just try to be as accessible as I can. Even before this pandemic, I just believe that I should try to be as accessible as possible. I mean, we, we are larger than other, you know, the, the other institution that I, uh, from which I just came, but we're still not too large that it's, uh, you know, it shouldn't be unreasonable for the students to get to know the university president a little bit. It shouldn't be unreasonable for me to be able to interact with, you know, most of our faculty or our staff. Um, I just think that that's an important part of creating the, the culture that we want to create here. My wife, Amy, is, is, is around, walks the dog on campus. The most popular member of the Leahy family remains that dog that you heard barking uh, just a few minutes ago. Um, it's great to have the kids here. It's just, uh, it's who we are. And I, I you know, I, I hope it's uh, well received because I intend to keep doing it. We have some questions coming in for President Leahy, and they are very interesting questions. So uh, some of them are a little rapid fire. So I think as we end our conversation over the next few minutes, it's good that these are the quick hitting questions. So the first one, I think, is one everyone wants to know, President Leahy. Michael Jordan or LeBron James? Uh, Michael Jordan. Have I mean, you been I, able to I grew up I grew up in Maryland, so I'm a huge fan of the ACC and uh, you know watching Michael Jordan at uh, UNC and then what he did professionally. I evidently I have great respect for LeBron James too. Don't get me wrong. I mean he's amazing, but Jordan, you were even it... answers, didn't you? <laughs> well, I no, I because I'm with you. I grew up. I was a Knicks fan. I grew, I am a Knicks fan. I grew up being terrorized by Michael Jordan. But have you been able to catch Patrick, any of the last? You're a Patrick Ewing fan, though I bet. Oh, he's my guy. Yeah, George yeah. Uh, Hoya Pride. Have you been able to catch any of the Last Dance on ESPN? Not yet. I, it's on my watch list, but um, I haven't yet. But I intend to. The next question comes in. One of the things that we all took, I think, note of when you joined here at Monmouth and you became the president was your intimate relationship with the Jersey Shore going all the way back your entire life. So this question comes right out of that. Bon Jovi or Bruce? Uh, Bruce, no, no question. Great thrill of my time. And I should have mentioned that my first nine months was having a chance to meet Bruce Springsteen. Uh, I was, we were at an event, and they, they said to him, do you want to meet the new president at at Monmouth, because you know, we are the proud hosts of the Bruce Springsteen Archives, Center for American Music. And uh, he said, yeah, that'd, that'd be fine. So I go up, I get a chance to meet him, really nice, warm handshake, you know, exchange pleasantries. And then my wife, Amy, comes along and she goes to put her hand out for a nice handshake. And the boss says, oh, come here. And gives her this really nice, warm hug. It was just phenomenal uh so i've been a big fan of springsteen growing up i mean 70s and 80s music's my thing so uh nothing against bon jovi who's a real artist but uh bruce well president Leahy, i know i speak for the entire monmouth community when i say thank you for for coming on hawk talk and for doing this and and before we officially say good night I'll, I'll give you the last word just what you'd like to leave the Monmouth University family with as we conclude our conversation. I guess I'll, uh, I'll leave you with, uh, I'm sure uh, Coach Callahan brought this up on, on his 
visit to your show uh, a few weeks ago. I happened to see that Coach Callahan put these together, uh, these wristbands, and I saw it on social media. So I reached out to him again and said, what's a guy got to do to be a part of this? And he said, I'll, I'll drop some off for you right away. And I just love the idea of it. And I, generally speaking, I think he'll say what inspired this is that we cannot control the events that affect us. They're way beyond our control. But what we can control is our response to those events. And uh, I know he's been telling his staff and his team that we have to continue to do everything we can to be ready because at some point we are going to be back together again. And we're going to light up this campus again uh, at that time. And we want to be ready for that. And so I just would say to our, the entire Monmouth community to keep the faith. We're working through this. Uh, we're doing everything we can to make sure that we keep students at the focus of what we do here. It's, it's who we are. And this is really, if you think about it, an opportunity for us to demonstrate that to our students. And uh, when we can open up again, uh, we will be ready. So that's what I would I would leave you with. Well, President Leahy, again, thank you so much for, for being able to spend a few minutes with me. We wish you and your family continued health. Really appreciate your time, sir. Thank you very much. A pleasure to be with a professional like you, Eddie, and Gary, and Greg. And uh, we'll keep working on that podcast with uh, Professor Harmon. <laughs> and I think that is probably the perfect way to leave it. And it really is the best way to get the inside information with what's going on at Monmouth. Please check out the podcast that President Leahy does with Matt Harmon. It's all over social media. It's on Monmouth.edu as well. And again, we have to thank President Leahy on behalf of the president of Monmouth University. I'm Eddie Acapinti, thanking you for checking out the end of our fourth week of Hawk Talk. All of these episodes are archived on MammothHawks.com. We appreciate you watching and enjoy the weekend, everyone.